Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be reading the book, The Princess of 8th Street. So, this is by Lenas Alessinias. So, this book I've gotten a great message from. And I'd like to share that message with you. So, let's get into it. The Princess of 8th Street. In a land not far away, in a time not long ago, there was a beautiful princess named Jane. Princess Jane lived with her royal family, high up in a tower, where the princess' bedchamber had a sweeping view over the kingdom of Eighth Street. There's little Jane, here's some houses, and there's some birds, there's a dragon. Oh, and there either a little stuffed animal or a dog. Jane knew that being a princess wasn't all parties and games. Her royal duties included keeping up with her studies, practicing her painting and dancing and singing, and managing the royal zoo. Every day at half past three, Princess Jane would join the ladies in waiting for tea. The ladies were very respectful. They never spoke out of term, and they insisted that the princess had all of the cookies. But still, the ladies in waiting were f awfully quiet. Sometimes the princess felt very lonely. One day, the queen entered the princess's chamber and asked Jane to accompany her to the market. Princess Jane was thrilled at the change at the chance to leave the palace. She excused her ladies in waiting, sending one to fetch her cloak. Suddenly, a horrible toad named Nicholas appeared at the door and made a nasty face. The toad was always making faces at Princess Jane and he tormented her ladies-in-waiting at every opportunity. Needless to say, she was he was banned from royal tea parties. But because she was a, as good as she was beautiful, the princess did not have the loathsome creature, creature squished. She merely called out to the queen as she watched the queen dragged the scoundrel back to the slimy moat. Outside the castle, crowds hurried down the thoroughfare and nobbled, whisked, whisked by the golden carriages. The queen took Princess Jane by the hand and led her toward the marketplace. So, I'd just like to stop and point out this picture, how detailed it is, and I just wanted to show you that it's like all princessy, crown diner, castle reality, king cleaner, golden dragon, all princessy. On the way, the queen gestured toward the pleasure grounds on the outskirts of their kingdom. What would you like? Would you like to stop here and play for a bit? She inquired, as she did every time they asked. The princess shook her head sadly. She had been to these pleasure grounds before, and the lords and ladies had not been kind to her. The princess was small and delicate, so she could not keep up with the rough and tumble sports. It was a hard, lonely life being a princess. At the marketplace, the queen treated Princess Jane to sweet candies. Although the townspeople must have been surprised to see the queen and princess walking among them, they knew better than to stare at the members of the royal family. After the purchases have been bundled up, the queen and the princess began their journey back to the castle. As they passed, as they walked by the pleasure grounds again, the queen met as a passing noblewoman. 
They engaged in conversation, and the queen insisted that the princess go off and play while they spoke. Although she would have preferred to stay with the queen, the princess headed toward the pleasure grounds. A feeling of dread weighed her down like a stone. A group of lords and ladies played near the swing set as the princess lowered herself onto an empty swing. A young red-haired maiden, whom Princess Jane had never seen before, approached and asked if Jane would like to join their game. We're playing tag. You're it, the maiden cried. Then she ran away. Reluctantly, the princess rose from her swing and gave chase to the lords and ladies. But as always, the little princess could not run fast enough to catch any of them. Eventually, she clapped, collapsed onto a swing, exhausted. The lords and ladies taunted her. Ha ha, you're still it. Tired as, the cre- tired as she was, the princess had had enough. She definitely stuck out her chin. She was a princess after all, and said, "Yes, you're right. I am it." The cheering group fell quiet. They did not know what to make of this royal pronouncement. The red-haired maiden tapped Jane's shoulder. Now I'm it. Jane replied, No, I'm still it. No, I'm it, said the maiden. Princess, the princess stood. I'm it. I'm Jane, the princess of 8th Street. Well, I'm Samantha, the princess of 10th Street. Princess Jane began to giggle. Princess Samantha began to laugh. They decreed decreed they were both it. Then they chased the lords and ladies about the pleasure grounds until everyone was out of breath. From that day onward, Princess Jane and Princess Samantha ruled over the pleasure grounds together. The kingdom of 8th Street and 10th Street were joined in lasting peace. And afternoon tea was never quiet again, especially when the horde too tried to join in. The end. Thank you for listening to this book. And I have a challenge for you. I want you to make the story keep going in the comment section down below. Say what you think will happen. Now, say what you think will happen after Princess Jane and Princess Samantha became friends. And comment down below what your favorite part of the story was. Mine was when Princess Jane and Princess Samantha became friends again. Well, for the first time. And make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.